All right, welcome back to another episode. Uh, it's just Jason here today. Uh, we've got a special, real special episode, actually. Um, I guess I would say consider this one part two of the 90s melodic death metal episode that we just did. You guys probably mentioned me say at the end of that episode, if you listened, that I was I was trying to get a good interview to go along with it just to kind of make it special and, you know, get some context, uh, what was going on around that time, whatever. So, uh, funnily enough, I, you know, I had reached out to Sacramento before the episode, didn't hear back, so I figured that wasn't happening. But Nisei, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, from uh, from Sacramento, he's, he's, he's one of the main guys, the founder, uh, vocalist, he did bass, he writes riffs, I mean, he's... Uh, He's kind of the spirit behind this band, and um, he reached out and he uh, he uh, was he was really into the episode. He liked it, you know. He had listened to it and just uh, he, he, it's cool. It's cool when a band shouts out to you like that. It doesn't happen that much, uh, once in a while, and it's just it's cool. It's always cool when that something like that happens. So that was really that was really cool to hear from him, and he uh, he was super down to do an interview. So I could not turn that down, and uh, it was really. A lot of fun. It was uh, about an hour and a half here talking to him. We went pretty deep. We went into Far Away from the Sun. We talked about his whole past, his history, you know, starting the band, the Swedish scene in the 90s, other bands around him, you know, his uh, relationship with John from Dissection. You know, man, everything about Sacramento, especially Far Away from the Sun, and uh, as well as uh, what we're going to hear from their new album. So hopefully you guys enjoy it, and uh, the rest of the guys will be back for the next one. for your, your your kind words on the podcast. Oh yeah, man. I'm glad you checked it out. I'm glad you liked it. I mean, we're fucking we're all huge fans, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as you could I, hear. That's fantastic. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, I I saw it on uh, a post on Instagram and then um, uh, when I was in the car, I, I just looked it up and, you know, uh, started listening to it and couldn't stop listening to it. And, you know, <laughs> when you get to the end, it was, you know, yeah. Yeah, you had to wait all the way to the end. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to contact these, these guys. <laughs> uh, no, that was awesome, man. It was super cool to hear from you. Yeah. Okay, cheers. Cheers to you. I wish I could have a beer. It's the middle of the day for me. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. It's, I got a it's coffee. It's Friday night uh, evening and, you know, the wife is out and the kids are out, so... You know, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So we just did that episode, like like you're aware of, you know, on the podcast. Yeah. So I mean, this is just perfect timing. You know, I think it'll it'll add some cool context to that. And uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of interviews without with you out there, man. So it'll be cool to to no, have one for people to to check out. It isn't. I I don't know if you you listened to the one I did uh, for another pod, uh, the Hessian Firm. Yeah, I, I listened to about half of it. Yeah, Got I, half. I haven't listened to it myself. I, I just remember, you know, it from when I did it. And uh, as I recall, it, uh, he, he was asking a lot of good questions and uh, followed up with uh, a lot of good questions when I, um, you know, yeah, told him. And um, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm really thinking, I think I, I've only done three, three 
interviews since um, 1999, I think. Wow. So yeah. this yeah. is the fourth. And I have uh, gotten a lot of interviews, but I, I have written and told them that if it isn't genuine good questions, then I won't answer it. And they, yeah, understand. And you get shit questions. Mm-hmm. And I, what the fuck? I don't. I, I don't. I don't have time for this. For that. Sure. I mean, my my time is limited as it is, so I have to make priorities all the time and uh, save my energy for what I really want to do. So I can get that, man, for sure. When I did listen to that. I was uh, I was like really blown away by your passion for <laughs> for your music and music in general. I, I love yeah. I love hearing that from guys that especially it's one thing from a guy in a new band they're coming up you know they're in the scene they're excited but to hear from a guy a, a veteran that just always makes me smile. I love that. I mean I I love to meet uh, people when we're playing fans of all sorts. I mean. I'm just a fan as much as you are. I don't know if you are playing in a band or whatever, but but still, I mean, I'm a fan of this music, of music in general. But I like all music that that is good, that that I can that gives me something that uh, it has to be have have some sort of deeper meaning for for me, music because I mean, music is the ultimate art form. I think. Um, you have so many things in music. You you have art. You have uh, poetry. You have music. As a, all all this combined, if you do it right, <laughs> which we obviously did on Far Away from the Sun, uh, and will continue to do so. Uh, the new album we're working on is, you know, we're tapping into the same feeling that we had back then, even though we were very young and you know, didn't really get what we were doing, but we had, anyway, really, the ideas we had, we, we didn't compromise with. Um, and then, of course, Don Swan helped out a lot. And I mean, it's a cooperation. Um, we've been privileged to have <laughs> great people around us to, um, to work with as well. So, um, but yeah, thank you for that. Uh, that you <laughs> you enjoy that, that 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 tells me a lot of about you, um, since you're obviously passionate. Yeah, that's just, that's just it. I mean, it's such a passion of mine, obviously, or else we wouldn't be doing the podcast. And uh, no. <laughs> and I, I mean, do do you see your passion for this going away? No, you're you're right. No. Exactly right. <laughs> and I mean, no, I I, I would never say that. it's when. Uh, the first interview I did, it was for a Spanish uh, underground magazine. I, I, I choose that <laughs> sign. I think it only a thousand copies or something like that. And it, it was the most best interview I've ever did, most complex interview I ever did. Um, it's about 10 pages long, mm-hmm. I think. And uh, first I answer, answered the questions um, by mail and... Um, then I told him to call me to get follow-up questions from the answers that I, I, I had given. Uh, so it was the most in-depth interview ever. Uh, I can send it to you, but it's, it is in Spanish. Okay. Uh, so you have to <laughs> Google it to yeah. translate it. I, I mean, but it's a very good interview. and. Uh, but but I I choose it because it is an underground sign and in, and it is in Spanish, and I thought man this is good. Uh, I'm not, you know. <sighs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We're into this for fame or whatever. We're into this because our own frustrated frust- frustrated souls tells us <laughs> to. You know. When uh, when did that all start for you? You know, being passionate about music was it just super young age? Yeah. I mean, I guess when it really, really started, it was I was 14, and um, my first concert was was um, Iron Maiden, the Seventh Son of the Seventh Son tour in mm-hmm. 1988, and uh, it was Halloween as a supporter uh, from the Keeper of the uh, Seven Keys Part Two, and I, I told my parents I had to go to this concert. It was in Stockholm, and they told me no. 
And I said, yes. Um, I didn't discuss it more anymore. I bought a ticket and then I, I left. You know, it was a really long way to go. And um, I did it. I go, went to it. It was fantastic. And I, you know, after that, it wasn't an issue anymore. Then I could go to Stockholm whenever I wanted to see concerts. And the year after, I went to, to see Dark Angel and Slayer. And, you know, mm. f- from there on, you know, it just... They, they realized that, yeah, he's, he, he means this. So he really wants it and it, it won't go away. So, And he does what he wants to anyway, <laughs> as I showed them. I don't care what you say. I'm going anyway. I don't discuss it. I just do it. Um, that's pre- pretty much <laughs> as I am today. I, I do things instead of debating or argue or whatever. Was that, uh, did you know then that you wanted to be in a band or did that take a minute? No, back then, I mean, I I was just a kid, you know, I was uh, just, wow, this is so cool. I mean, I I mean, you looked up to to a lot of bands. I I do now as well. I I met Autopsy for the first time (laughs) at uh, California Death Fest. Mm. Uh, they're playing and I, I was like a, a kid afterwards <laughs> my wife uh, took some photos with us and uh, she said you were just you know almost jumping around <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so cool. yes I, I'm still that little kid you know yeah uh, when I I meet my I mean of course yeah, yeah. Well, why shouldn't you I mean you should show appreciation for for people you like and bands you like i mean an autopsy i mean man autopsy it's autopsy. <laughs> it's hard to beat <laughs> when uh so you started with stuff like that that kind of you know the iron maiden and the thrash and all that um yeah. i mean you know the extreme stuff back then you had a much smaller audience compared to today so like kind of how did you get introduced to it? how did you find some of the underground stuff and did you have other people around you that were into it as well no i had a neighbor um that uh, who was uh, two years older than me, uh, he wasn't into he was in, into ordinary heavy metal and doom metal, but he 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 introduced me to the underground scene and Me- Metal Forces uh, magazine, um, where they had ads back on the posters. Uh, so I be- began as a tape trader when I was 13, 14 years old, and um, this was back in 87, 88. So I started to, you know, trade demos and live tapes with people from all around. Amongst others, I, I wrote to Shaq Schuldiner and, and, you know, Trey Sagdoth and, and Chris Reifert. I still have his letter at home. So, I, I mean, <laughs> and I told him, of course. <laughs> and cool. he said, oh, man. So I, I was asking him about... Uh, you, you left death now, but you have a new band called the Autopsy. I need a, a demo. Uh, <laughs> so that's how I started. And I, I got a lot of, you know, from everywhere. Um, Sweden also, um, of course. Uh, I had some fr- friends up in Stockholm. Um, but back then, I didn't know them. But I, I was just, you know, writing letters. I was just a little kid, you know, sitting home. And, you know, after school, I was, you know, hurrying home to see you in the mailbox and there almost every day there were some new cassettes mm. with uh, uh, new music and uh, you know my mother she really uh, thought this isn't this isn't good for him he, 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 the sounds I mean copied demos live tapes for, back then it wasn't the best of sound but still you know I was listening to it <laughs> all the time and it was just a matter of time before I, my father, he he was, he, he played in, in some bands for fun, had done in his youth. So he, he saw that my passion for it was real. So he got me a guitar and, you know, that's just the way it started. I never had the ambition to do anything more than uh, you know back then this underground scene it who knew that it would grow to be this gargantuan that it is today i mean i certainly did not believe that um it's (laughs) really i mean 
it's crazy, but yeah. I still love it. I mean, people understand the 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 feeling and that this is this is something more. I mean, this music has never gotten uh, advert. They they never got the help. It just underground and it just blew up. Okay, you had all this sensational stuff in Norway, but that helped obviously. But um, I think that when people hear it, and a lot of people that I knew back in the days that they didn't understand what the hell I was listening to. But, you know, nowadays, almost everybody, you know, thinks it's, man, this is this is good. It's mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's, it's complex. It's very complex music, as you know, and it's deep feelings. I mean, it, that's what it's all about. Um, to feel, yeah. listen, feel, and uh, when, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, so you were doing the demo thing and getting into all that kind of stuff. Did How did you come across the, 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 you know, the core members of Sacramentum and how did you know, like, you know, these were going to be the right guys for the right fit? Yeah, and um, Anders, he moved to, to we, we lived in a little city in the middle of Sweden, you know, it wasn't a big city, you know, uh, at all, uh, and it it was quite boring. <laughs> and uh, all, as long as I can remember, I always, even though I had friends around me, I always always felt like I'm alone. Uh, uh, that something is amiss, and I actually nowadays I know know a lot about it, and I understand why. Uh, in many ways, but uh, I still feel like that, and I mm -hmm. that this is, you know, hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, uh, <laughs> and that's much what Far Away from the Sun is all about. Uh, but uh, Anders, he, he, the guitarist, Anders Brolick, he, he moved to Falshepping, where I grew up, when we started. Um, ah, what is it? High school in, in uh, you, when you're now you're 15, 16, you're going yeah. up to the next le level. Uh, he uh, he moved there and uh, he he went into a class. He didn't know anybody because he he moved there to an own apartment to attend school there because he was from a really little shithole. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he had to go there, and um, a couple of my old friends. Uh, ended up in the same class and he said when he said he liked uh, trash and death metal they said instantly you gotta meet Nissa he says real <laughs> <You know? laughs> and the same day we met and you know it was just oh man I have a band do you want to play guitar in that yeah I have a friend in Stockholm he said uh, there's a cool gig I think it was Clash of Titans is you know next week or something oh let's go yeah man <laughs> so we <laughs> You know, it just from there it it was. I mean, <laughs> it was what what can you say? Love at first sight, or, <laughs> and I mean, uh, we shared a lot of core values, and um, since then we had, yeah, I mean, and we had have grown together for all yeah. that time till now. So, I mean, <laughs> this is very personal, but still, I mean, I ended up marrying him as my wife my wife's personality is a lot of like him and he ended up marrying me uh, but he div he's divorced now but <laughs> okay anyway, yeah <laughs> I, i'm quite quite demanding at some times so i understand <laughs> why he divorced me <laughs> it's a joke now but this is the freudian uh, <laughs> thing you know right fuck. right I, I, it, it was a couple of years ago i understand fuck i married <laughs> him and he married me oh it's funny okay Hmm. <laughs> so we are very important to each other, even though we can be quite pissed at each other sometimes as well. Uh, but I think that you have to be, it has to be like that in, in a real creative, uh, I mean, it's to get to really good stuff. I mean, you can't always patch each, uh, each other, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and say, ah, this is great, this is good. I mean, they'd say, no, mm, ah, let's try this. And 
Well, it's yeah, got to help to have that. Thing. You know, I, I have a thousand, I have chaos in my head all the time. And, and I just, you know, try to sort things out all the time. And Anders, he, he like, you know, is, oh, I can't understand. I can't relate it to what you're saying. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Yeah, but it's too much all the time. <laughs> so we're, you know, complete opposites in, in many ways. But, you know. Somehow we, we work around it and you know, get the best out of it. And um, Yeah, if you have that strong of a connection with someone, that's got to come across musically too. And be it's got to be yeah. a big advantage when you're writing together, even if it's, yeah, yeah even yeah. if you have those yeah. difficulties. But, but then um, I have to say, Niklas, the drummer, he, he, he wasn't on the first mini CD or the demo, as I used to call it. Uh, he, he, um, we, we still live when we did the, the demo, our se- second demo, official demo, but uh, we released it ourselves uh, in 150 copies on CD and uh, we went to Unisound in the, or I think it was January or February, January, February 1994, we went up to uh, Unisound, yes, uh, he had just started up, I think, and uh, but there were uh, a couple of cool bands that have been there before, and we knew some of them. Dark Funeral, for instance, they recorded their mm-hmm. first mini mm-hmm. CD uh, at the same time. I think I, I, we recorded an hour before, and then they recorded after. I remember, anyway, Black Moon and Ariman calling me when they were up there because they read in the in the guest book or something, you know. And we <laughs> we, we had met before, and. Uh, you know, everybody was friends back then, you know, it was a very little scene. So everybody knew everybody and, you know, especially the ones that were more extreme or uh, more interested in um, the dark ways uh, for real in, uh, and not just as a, as a kind of uh, image or whatever. Um, um, uh, it, were, it was good times. <laughs> wow, yeah, I, I, I am privileged. I, I, I realized that, and I am very thankful for everything uh, that I, I had the chance to be there at the time when something new was created. Uh, really, um, it, it's it, it's it's very important of. And it's, it's such a big part of who I am, even though I am today uh, a family man, a father, you know, or everything. But still, why can't can't you be both? I mean, I I never understand or understood why people limit themselves to this and that. And <sighs> I've been working with that all my life, not to even bother if. People have an opinion about me. Yeah, that's your opinion. You don't know. I don't tell them, but I, inside my head, you, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about anyway. So I don't, I don't care. What the fuck? And then I stand there and smile. And, yeah. yeah. That's right. I don't hear what they are saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like you were saying, I mean, what a wild time, too, to, especially in Sweden. I mean, so many classics were coming out, so many great bands at the time. I mean, what was that like just around you? Was it a super strong scene with shows or, or was everything spread out? Um, you know, what was the vibe like there? It's a part, partially it's a hazy time because <laughs> there were a lot of partying and, <laughs> yeah. you know, but um, it's, it's hard to say. It was not a lot of shows because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't popular back then. Um, yeah. So now there were a few here and there, and it was really on the ground. And you you went to those uh, couple of uh, that that were. I mean, in in the late eighties and in the beginning of the nineties, me and Anders we we went up to Stockholm a lot, and uh, you know witnessed some uh, awesome shows with you know. This member just released the mm. first album and Grave and uh, you know everywhere uh, entombed and I mean uh, I saw Morbid Angel in, in 1990 uh, best it's still the best concert I ever been to wow uh, I mean it uh, I have it on video because a friend of mine he was filming it uh, it's amazing I mean 
even <laughs> you can see, you know, David Winston standing there on stage. They have his sound problems, and the peop- uh, the crowd is just, you know, singing. Uh, you know, <laughs> ah, it's it's magic. It's magic. Yeah. And I think that show really, really, really had such a big impact on me that, uh, you know, I have to do this. I have to do this. And um, it's been uh, missing uh, in, for many, many years for me. But I had, um, had, I, I had let out my creativity in other ways. And I always written uh, like poetry and, and, you know, stuff like that, mostly for myself. So mm-hmm. all these things and, you know, ideas, riffs, everything. I, I've been saving it for the right time. Um, I have done some different projects with uh, different people. Uh, uh, an old childhood friend of mine, David Anderson, uh, who plays in a uh, night flight orchestra and soil work. He's a fabulous guitar player. Uh, me and him have done a lot of cool stuff, but we never released anything because, I mean, <laughs> I'm not into soil work. I, I think they suck, but yeah. Night Flight Orchestra, I really enjoy. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, but we, we are doing our different things, but I have a, we have a new project, and that might be something that we will release, though. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, and if, it, if, if we don't, so be it. I mean, we're doing it mostly, for, I am doing it mostly for myself anyway. I, I think it's like, you know, it's kind of a <laughs> never-ending therapy for myself. Yeah, or, like an outlet. Yeah, what you say? You 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 educating yourself in 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 you know, feeling whatever. Uh, it can get you to places you've never been to before and only dreamt about, and suddenly, whoa! <laughs> yes, this is it. So that was probably around the time back. We're talking, you're saying, uh, 90s. We're talking about uh, going to some of those shows. I mean, what about when things started to shift a little bit, you know, 93, 94, you know, you guys had the demo, the EP. Um, You know, you guys changed styles quite a bit there. I mean, it was an evolving style. You know, what was kind of going on with you guys going from that all the way kind of leading up to Far Away From The Sun where you guys really kind of defined it? Um, well, as we, we, I mean, I, I'm still a fan of the early Swedish death metal. I mean, I think it's fantastic. Uh, but the thing that is that we, we had our roots in uh, Maiden and Judas Priest. Um, so even though I like this brutal death metal thing, yeah, I felt that that combining it instead, you know, and I, I, I like thrash metal, I like heavy metal, I like doom metal, I like so much and I like, you know, classical music. And and we we thought that why, 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 why? We should, you know, and it was big, becoming a big thing back then also, you know, it's becoming trendy or whatever <laughs> uh, to, to play this kind of, of uh, down-tuned, you know, uh, stuff. So we, we nah, fuck it. We, we tune in E. We we tune as a regular and mm-hmm. and started doing the, that and you know melodic but still with a lot of feeling and uh, it's no 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 happy riff as, so to speak and we shared rehearsal place with in flames in the early days uh, and they were asking me to sing on their second album and and I replied. Mm, no, guys, I don't sing on circus music. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, man. You know, they, they, they thought that I, oh, I wasn't very nice, but <laughs> right. I, I didn't care. I, mean, I, I, I had, you know, we were, I was, we were focusing on Sacramento back then. So, yeah, it's funny because you can hear, I mean, in flames, you know, they've got that. Iron Maiden influence as well, but it's like you guys are coming to it from such a different place and a darker, more morose, you know. Yeah, sad, melancholic. Sad. Yeah. You know, that's what grab holds of my soul. And, you know, I don't know. 
it's hard to explain, but that's the thing I like. And it, I like melodic stuff, you know, and In Flames have done a lot of good things, but it's not for us. Um, they're there. They are doing their thing and they are absolutely not into this, what do you call, the dark side of life for that we, I have been and I just, you know, since little kids, you know, there's some always something that has, you know, clawing at your soul and, and, and you know, this is interesting. Ah, I get, I have to go further into this and explore this. And uh, I mean, of course you get lost on the way, but you know, um, you learn things from it as well. So, I mean, there's, there's no education in life that is, you know, the right way or whatever. Uh, and I realized that as, you know, I really realized it when I was 16, I think that that, that was when, when we were doing Sacramento, me and I understand we were, you know, realized that, oh, fuck, we have to recreate ourselves. Um, we have to, you know, tear everything down and uh, start from the beginning. I mean, what do I believe? What do, do this means to me? My, take away everything else, parents, school, society, whatever, friends, everything, everything, everything. What do I feel about this? What do I, and who the fuck am I really, you know? Uh, and this was a, you know, a hard, and this is a tough process and it's a lifelong process. And I'm, I mean, you know, still doing it and I have to do it because otherwise I would regress. And I mean, nah. I'm not interested in that. I, I want to get forward all, always, all the time. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't know where we started this. Yes, yeah, that's just, all right. No, I find that I, I super interesting. Thinking, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm, I love it. I, I find that super interesting, though. I think it makes a lot of sense. Like when I first was talking to you about how passionate you sound about music, but also oh, yeah. Sacramentum. And I mean, I think to me, part of that, it's like you are staying so true to yourself and your sound and you're kind of pouring all of what your beliefs and all like, straight into the band where some people are in a band for fun or they just are playing certain things where it's like with you, it's you're, you're putting yourself right into the band, which makes sense oh, why you're so passionate. Oh, I'm fucking naked in my lyrics and, uh, you know, the flow of the music and, you know, I, I bear my soul on Far Away From The Sun. The castle symbolizes my soul, for example, you know, on Far Away From The Sun. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I think it's what, there's, there's a certain thing, I know we were talking about this on the episode, but how there's a special there's a certain kind of like magic about that that album in specific you know there's a certain thing it's like a extra factor to it that you just can't really put your finger on i think maybe maybe some of that's where it's coming from i don't know if you know what i'm saying but yeah i mean, I, I understand what you're saying and i i believe i, I we are i mean in recent years i have been asking myself that question because under many 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 years i i tried to deny a lot of things uh, which was wrong but you know i had to take care of my kids i had to you know work and get money my wife were educating herself and you know i was the breadwinner and blah 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 and um, I, I i had to f i did deny all these things because i had a goal in sight and it was a tough time, but I didn't care. I didn't listen to people back then. Oh yeah, it's you from Sacramento. When I was a concert, I said, no, it's not me. You're mistaking. <laughs> no, I never played in a band because I didn't do, yeah. <laughs> I, I tried to find other sides of myself, but at the, as, at the same time, I was slowly, slowly killing my own soul. Uh, mm. <laughs> So it's it's a paradox, but still, that's my way, and I had to do it that way to get to the point where I am today. And I or Anders would never do, we would never reunite Sacramentum, and we would stop it immediately if we weren't getting the same feeling that we had back then. If it isn't fun anymore, it should be fun. It should be, you know, 
profound uh, and true. If it isn't, then we quit directly. And that's why we quit back in 1999, because it wasn't fun anymore. It was just, we just, nah, uh, we could continue to release shitty albums and people would probably listen to it anyway and blah, blah, blah. But no, why? I mean, nah, that's not for us. Uh, mm. Now we've done the thing, you know, our, our, our kids are, you know, between, I think, tw- uh, my, I have twin daughters, they are uh, 15 <laughs> now, and uh, Anders' youngest uh, son is 13, I think, so they are, you know, much on their own now, and we've got a lot of free time, um, but back then we, we, we didn't have that, and we focused on what I think is a good focus, really, instead of be out touring or making shitty albums that you can't really put your soul into, it's better to put it on hold and see, ah, should we pick it up later or should we do something else? I don't know, but um, I will, always felt that Sacramento will be coming back. Um, so it was just a matter of time. Um, I didn't think it would take this long time but still (laughs) and then i was i was so surprised to you know i started looking on the internet because i had i had never googled you know far away from the sun or myself and all of a sudden you know what people are actually (laughs) listening to this now what the fuck you know (laughs) And and then we got such offers for for playing live you know at the, from from especially from death fest and we hey wow we gotta do this i mean i i want to do it do you want to do it yeah 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 we talked to each other front and back and yeah we want to do it and then we started to rehearse and you know whoa the energy the feeling it was there again you know we missed meeting like this and uh, you know, getting time for ourselves in the rehearsal place and just, you know, you know, you go somewhere else when you're playing these old songs. I do, you know, and now I sing only to, to be able to make justice to to the lyrics and the concept and everything. And it's fantastic. It's great. I mean, I always wanted to do that, but, you know, back then. It was hard to get the right people to be in the band, and I guess everybody else we knew were were in bands and were, uh, you know, occupied with that. And then you had to get get the people that had the same attitude and were as serious as yourself. And that was strange. As strange as it sounds, it was very very tough to find the right members, uh, even back in the days because. I don't know. We 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 are we were and still are, but you know, down tuned a lot. We we are, you know, very <laughs> what do you call it? Strange and crazy persons. I don't know. <laughs> uh, genuine persons. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I mean, my circle is small, but you know, those I have around me there is ah, oh, they're magic. Uh, I mean. The best I know, this is I sit I sitting down now in the basement of my house. I built my sanctuary down here. Um, it's a room where I can go and reflect, and you know, anything goes in here. I mean, the people I invent here, it's no rules. You can't have the wrong opinion here. It's you know, everything is totally okay in here. So, um, I mean. And that's another thing, you know, um, I needed, probably needed the time to, this time away from Sacramento to, to realize uh, a lot of things about myself and um, grew as a person and um, um, to be able to be genuine again in music, uh, really. Um, I think so, and I'm, I'm thankful for it. I mean, time is an illusion anyway, so it doesn't matter. When um, when you guys were working on Far Away from the Sun, yeah, and I, uh, yeah, it's such a it's such a seamless 
album. Everything sounds so easy about it, but was it a long, hard, hard process? I mean, how, you know, was it something that came naturally or did it take a while to form all those ideas and melodies? And, and cause I mean, the bit, the, the coolest thing about that album is just the way that you guys combine the melody with the, you know, the aggression yeah. and the, you know, all of that. And it's just such a hard yeah. balance and it just seems like it wouldn't be easy. No, it's not easy. Uh, it wasn't easy, but it came naturally in, in a way. Uh, then of course, the guitarist that we had back then was Johan Normans, and he later, <clears throat> right before uh, they recorded, we recorded Far Away From The Sun two weeks after Storm of the Light's Bane were recorded. And one of the songs that we originally wrote for Sacramentum, Johan wrote some riffs on that one that later became, came to be a dissection song. Mm. Uh, so we had to, you know, what the fuck did you give away? What the fuck? <laughs> you know, and we had, you know, a couple of weeks to just do this new song to be on the album for Far Away From The Sun. Uh, and we were a, a guitarist short. So, you know, like Niklas, he, he never heard or understood what we were doing really uh, with all these melodies and stuff. Uh, and he is kind of that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's go. Yeah, we, where we're going. He, he he's in you know old school death thrash guy. Mm. Which is, he's a fantastic. He's fantastic. He's, he's he's a fantastic musician. So he, I think he he helped us a lot with with different stuff, and we became a lot better be, because of him. Because um, he showed us some stuff, and he. I don't know. It, it, it just, it's, you know, coincidences a lot. And the fact that, I mean, John Nertweit, he was one of my best friends, you know, so we hung out all the time and we lived, you know, a couple of blocks from each other and we, we hung, hung out all the time because it was a, a small circle back then uh, here in Gothenburg. Um, I moved here in, uh, let's see, um, early 94, 94, there, something like that. And I, I think, uh, yeah, dissection, dissection. Yeah, I think it was the whole dissection that moved down as well. Uh, and it was because they are from a little town called Strömsta, which is a, also it's an even smaller town than, than I grew up in. But it's a, a coastal town, so it lives up on the summer. And it was in, it's very close to Norway. Uh, so they had, you know, uh, the connection <clears throat> there. Um, and Joan was, you know, since he was a really little kid, he, he did a lot of stuff, you know, arranging concerts. He was writing Mega Mag. He were, you know, involved in many, many things. And he was, you know, really, really great person. And he, he really, uh, took everything serious that he did. Uh, that's why everything that he did became so great. And of course, that inspired me as well. I mean, I learned a lot of lot from him. Uh, and uh, the fact that I, which we always heard that Sacramento is nothing but a, a copy of this dissection. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you're not listening close enough. It's all I can say. And mm -hmm. uh, no, you know. But it's it's a lot of with this, with all music when it well there's a lot of bands going under there and when it well when it comes it comes you know and yeah I don't know what to say about that but I think you understand that there's very much difference between dissection and sacramentum and yes the sound is alike yeah we recorded in the same studio and but. The songwriting is completely different. Um, yeah, it really is. Yeah, it is. I mean, Joe, I think it's a, it's a lazy, uh, easy comparison, you know. But if you are really listening to it, it's it's very easy to hear the differences. Thank you. <laughs> I think so too. I mean, our music is so much more complex than dissection ever will be. It, nothing. I, I I mean, I love the dissection. I mean, the Sombalane album is you know, wow, it's great. Um, mm -hmm. 
and also Storm of the Light Spain is a good good album as well. But Summerland is something special for me because it's you know the demo and I, I, I you know before they recorded Storm of the Light Spain I had heard all the songs you know in the rehearsal mm-hmm. place and everything and that's another one of my absolutely best shows I ever been to. It was Dissection when they played in Oslo with uh, uh, Dark Throne and. Um, Satyricon. I think it was mm. Satyricon's um, release party, actually, in 96, I guess, uh, for Nemesis Div- Divina. And Dissection was the first play- band to play, then the, um, Satyricon and then Dark Throne. And I can say that Dissection played the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fucking good. And I... I, I, I know now that there's even been a book written about just this concert because it was so fucking mm-hmm. good. I mean, I mean, I was just blown away. I was there with them, you know, and, you know, hel- helping them out with stuff. But, you know, I was just standing there in awe. And uh, when I saw it, it was, wow, man, fuck. <laughs> then I realized, you know, these guys, I mean, they're going to be huge. And then things went to shit yeah. with Joan. And I was with Joan for a while. And then I, no, nah, man, this is fucked up. And then, you know, our friendship, our, our friendship was over. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're friends again. <laughs> Why do you think that it's such a weird thing that you know, you've got Storm of the Light Spain that became such a classic. You know, most people would know that name. Yeah. And now, finally, Far Away from the Sun is finally getting the recognition. But why do you think it took the time? Because the quality is not the, the issue, right? Yeah. yeah, it's a very interesting question. And I, I've given it a lot of thought over the years. And I think, I think that, you know, sometimes people have to have time to understand things, because I think that we were ahead of our time there. Uh, for example, as, as one of my favorite bands, Lies in Wait, with, from mm. with my one of my best friends, Christian Wallin, Necrolord's band, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, that album <laughs> back then was, you know, it whew, went over the head of everybody. And I, I, I don't even think now that it's very, very popular, but a lot of people like it. But, you know, I, when I put it on, I, I go nuts, you know, it's so fucking great. Um, and I think that it has to grow, grow on people. I don't know. Or it's, is it a void <laughs> which dissection left that people want to fill? I don't know. But... Still, when they, when they listen to it, they they realize that whoa, this is this is something more. This is what the fuck. This is yeah, it's speaking to me. It's you know, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I, I I guess with the whole recording process and everything, you know, we were so young, we were so naive, but we still had this. No, no, it should be like this. We were very very hard, uh, and Swan was a you know and yeah yeah whatever <laughs> i remember <laughs> him. i remember him he said like you know they compared me to uh tony it uh, he said you do just as painful as he is you know and i uh, but what well, it should be like this i don't care if you understand it or not it, it's my yeah. my music my feelings what the fuck are you talking <laughs> about you know and <laughs> Uh, yeah, he wasn't too pleased about that back then, <laughs> but nowadays, you know, he he realizes also. I mean, he's a, a fantastic musician and, yeah. and technician and studio producer. And I actually got a, a new a, a song from the Coming of Chaos album. Uh, in I got it on Monday. On Mo- yeah, Monday, I got it, which has been. Um, remixed by Mr. Swanner. Mm. I, I sent our original tapes uh, this, uh, it was a couple, uh, it was a while ago. I sent, I had to send them to England to get them digitalized. And then I sent them to Swanner and asked him, do you, do you want to remix? It's both The Coming of Chaos and Thy Black Test. And a total remix uh, from it because I, I wanted to hear what 
could have been, so to speak. Uh, and, um, well, it will be interesting hmm. when we release them. Um, I have a, I only heard, heard one song yet, so and I said, man, we, we have been talking uh, a while, and I said to him, um, I get, got uh, the reference uh, sound or album that he should go from the gr- the ground from it and then it's all up to him i don't want to interfere too much because it's like you know if i want to build a house and i'm a carpenter i i, I i'm I, I shouldn't draw the house as well because i'm no architect but some people think they are and i think that was the problem with like the coming of chaos and by black destiny that we 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 thought that we were so fucking you know cocky and <laughs> you know yeah. and it was too many wills in there at the same time um and i was too nice i think to and just yeah we'll try that we tried that we tried that and i got you know confused nowadays i if there's something i don't think is right it's not happening I leave. I walk hmm. uh, because I, I, I. But back on far away from the sun, it was as I am now. It was no okay. Yeah, you, you can sing on the fucking album, Anders. I won't fucking sing to that fucking <laughs> shit riff. You know, I was <laughs> you know, yeah, a very very painful person to work with. I, I realized that, but. He, he 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 knows and you know he, he had put up a lot of with a lot of shit from me but he knows he knows he knows that i mean in the end i'm i mean well i'm i'm just you know you convince me otherwise and then i say yeah fine i was wrong but that seldom happens actually and i wish it happened more because i want to get you know, smacked on the fingers and yeah, you should do do it like this or this. And I, whoa, yeah, like that. Yeah, thank you. But hmm, yeah, well, you've <laughs> obviously got the right instincts when it comes to this music. I mean, that shows for itself, especially with the quality. I mean, like you said, if that's if on that album you were insistent on what was happening, I mean, you you kind of knew knew you had to trust your instincts. I, I think yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that, that's good. That's trust your instincts, and that's what we're doing now. Nothing else. And you know, the coming of chaos and and uh, thy black destiny. It, we had Central Media breathing down our necks. You know, you're gonna release an album. Blah, blah, blah. It was a lot of. We we felt pressured and stressed, and mm. you know. We should have combined those two albums to one album, mm. and we should have gone back to Unisound. There you go. But mm-hmm. I don't regret anything. So we have learned from all this, and we're here now. Uh, that's the way. And I mean, I still like those two old albums, but the sound is really shitty, actually. And we're not heavy metal trash, even though the it goes more for the death trash sound. And uh, Andy Larock, um, who is a fantastic musician and mm-hmm. technician, uh, studio technician, uh, he never he, he he's great at heavy metal and all of this. He knows that, but he doesn't know death black metal, he, and he will. Mm, never do it because he doesn't understand that uh, and it's nothing wrong with that he's a fantastic guy i love him mm-hmm. he's wonderful but you know he, he he's doing his thing we're doing our thing and we sh- you shouldn't mix those things together that's you know mm, maybe that most people don't understand this, you know, when it comes to, to, to music. I mean, it's all about, I don't know, <laughs> making cool riffs or hard riffs or whatever. But, you know, if you don't get, get the flow, you know, then, uh, yeah, it's cool things, but mm, that's about it. Um, yeah. Oh. 
and that's our problem nowadays as well. Uh, we have a l many, many, many great things, and but it, everything just have had to come all together, and this is a long and slow and painful process. And but still, you can't force it. It's it's impossible. If we force it, then it won't be a, a good album, and we. If it isn't a good album, we won't release it. That's how it is. And yeah, I don't care who, who has problems with that. I, I, I don't care. Um, well, you said that uh, it's kind of like the the spiritual you know, successor to Far Away From The Sun. Like it, it kind of com comes from that same, yeah. you know. So what does that mean exactly? Like how are you guys achieving that? I mean, we talked about those two albums that came after it where you guys changed things up a little bit. But Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Far away from the sun uh, is such a personal album for me. Uh, all the songs, the lyrics, and everything are, you know, things I've experienced in, in one way or the other. Uh, and um, for this new album, I'm not sure about the title anymore, actually, so I won't say anything about it. Um, hmm. uh, I got a, a, a vision for a lot of, you know, the whole thing. And when we got the question about, I don't know how long it is now, three years ago or something like that, to reunite Sacramento and play all the death fests and, uh, you know, getting ridiculous amount of money for it. So we, we just, wow, what the fuck? Are we doing this for the right reasons? Or so I, I locked myself into my sanctuary here for two weeks approximately, uh, and did such a prof profound work with myself to see if I am able to do this genuinely again with Sacramento, or should we let sleeping corpses lie? And um, I mean. I remember my kids um, uh, were, you know, afraid of me when I came up just to eat something and I walked like, you know, like a zombie or, and, you know, um, but my wife explained to them that this, this, this is a very, very important thing for him now. So just leave him be, you know, there's nothing wrong. Yeah. Uh, and um, after that, or in that process, I, I I got a new vision close to the one I had. Or I was traveling far, far, far away again, and I saw uh, all all these things that, and I've lived a lot of these things that will be on the new album. So that's the connection. Um, apart from the coming of chaos and uh, thy black destiny. They weren't that profound uh, experiences. It was more, mm -hmm. you know, music and lyrics. That makes sense. That's like what we were talking about earlier, that, that first album and everything being so tied to everything you were feeling and the things that you wanted to get out and all that kind of stuff. So that, that makes sense. I mean, if you're coming at it from that same genuine, yeah, you know, mindset, it, it it makes sense that it would be uh, from that same. Yeah, and then there's another thing into it, and that's that's that we have to be, uh, we have to be true because the entity, <laughs> the spirit of Sacramento, I mean, it, it it has a will of its own, and it 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 is an entity now that demands things from from us, and one of the thing is. Of course, we have given life to this ancient entity, but still, you know, it 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 has great power over us, and especially me. And I, I have very much respect for it. And and we have to be true to the things that has made this happen for us. And it is far away from the sun. And I agree with that. I feel that with, from the depths of my soul that, yes, this is it. You know, so we have to be true to 
what did we do back then? And it's as I explained to you, the, I, this is how we did it. And, you know, this riff, this flow, now something's amiss. Okay, fuck it, start over. That's what we did back then as well. Uh, yeah, we're doing it, we're doing it. I mean, <laughs> fuck, I am so frustrated sometimes uh, when we can't get it together, so. But I, 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 at the same time, I'm, I'm glad and I'm respecting the process and everything because I, I know that, of course, we can force it together and do it like that and it will be okay. And it will probably, yeah, it, even if people deep down don't think it or believe it, they will, oh, wow, it's fantastic. But for me, it won't be. And then I don't, how can I be genuine and true to myself if I just stand there and pretend something. Ah, it will reflect in the music and on the album. And, mm, ah, I don't, I'm not interested in that. Then I can do other albums or whatever, other projects and do these things in, but not in Sacramento. It will, nah, it will never happen. And as I said, that, I mean, I, I know Christian Necrolord, since we were eight, I was 18, he, he's, he's three years older than me, but you know, we've been very, very close friends since then. And when he drew, painted far away from the sun, I, I was, you know, sitting beside him, beside him a lot of times, you know, on the process of the cover being made. And I said, like, now I, I've said, I would never release an album without a, a Necrolord cover again. And uh, Thy Black Destiny will have a Necrolord, a new mix of the, like, Thy Black Destiny will have a mm. Necrolord cover on it because the, Thy Black Destiny has some um, elements to it that will tie it together with uh, From Far Away From the Sun into um, uh, the new album. Um, and if we had the time I would, I, I, this is, a, this is a tough thing for me. I talked with Christian just the, the other day and he said like, you know, yeah, it's a shame that you can't release the coming of chaos with a, with a cover like that as well. And I said, oh fuck, Christian, do you know what you're doing to me now? <laughs> and, and I said, you know, how the hell should you have got the time to do that? No, it won't happen, but still, it's a shame. <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> now, you get, now you've gotten this into my head. And this is our relationship and has always been. This is why he is like, you know, he's my, you know, one of my closest friends and my my fucking mentor in everything I do. I just you know we we're sitting. I I'm telling ideas and he he likes yeah 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 very great, very great. And then you know he comes up with something like yeah, but it's not far away from the sun. <laughs> and I hmm, I hear you, I hear you. And he's the only person who really can smack can smack me on my hmm. fingers and tell you to this is not good enough, Nisa. Try harder. And he does it in such a smooth way. So, you don't, you, I mean, most people wouldn't even recognize, but I, I knew him too well. And I, hmm. And I do it to him as well, you know. Wow, <laughs> who's this painting for? Yeah, this is a new cool painting you're doing. Who's, uh, who are they for? And I'm standing there. Yeah, what do you think? Mm, yeah, 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 it's great. It's great. It's wonderful. But, you know, it would never be anything for us because of this or that and he hmm? I see how he just became stale and fuck this is wrong <laughs> <laughs> and then he you know does it over again so we are creative uh, we, we inspire each other uh, in different ways and, and it's always refreshing to to meet up with him or talk to him over the phone because you know even though well, it, it's not you know you should do this or, or that because he would never say anything like that and i would never say anything like that but we're discussing different things and topics and 
then afterwards, you know, everything just click, click, click. Yes, this is the way. And uh, we have the, the same impact on each other, you know. It's very, very interesting, but it's, uh, it's you know, great friendship and that's how it should be, I think. Um, what, uh, I mean, I'm just super happy to hear that, uh, that he's going to be doing, you know, the art for the next album and redoing the other one for the other album. And yeah. uh, what do you think, I mean, the, the significance and the importance, I mean, that album cover from Far Away From The Sun, it's such, it just really transports you to this other world. I mean, how important is that to you to have something like that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's very important. Uh, <laughs> we... That's why it took a year for the album to come out. It was recorded in June 1995 and it wasn't released until June 1996. And that's why, uh, because he had so much to do back then, uh, you know, he was becoming, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and he, he had to, you know, prioritize bigger band, big bands like, I, and I, you know, as a close friend, I mean, I don't care as long as this is going to be a genuine cover you know what I mean? and he refused to you know yeah you, you, either, either you wait or you, you have to go with someone else and i no, i don't want to go with someone else are you fucking no just i i respect your creative process and i don't want to have a cover without his creative process because i understand the creative process and i don't want to be forcing him to do you know ah, no <laughs> everything is e equally important and that's why we didn't have cover covers from him on the two other albums because there weren't time mm. uh, and i i shouldn't say regret because i don't regret anything in my life nothing because everything i did i did for a purpose and it learned me something and that's why I am, what I am today. So, uh, but if I could do it over, I would do it in a different way, so to speak. But, you know, uh, everybody probably would do a different things in their life but if they yeah. knew the results. But um, that's the reason. And for Central Media, we didn't have an option. You know, they were sending us, you know, <laughs> shitty covers from some German artists and I said what the fuck is this are you <laughs> fucking idiots or what uh, they were so pissed at me you know they oh fuck what oh. they, they 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 really thought I was a pain in the ass all the time uh, and I was because they they just focused on the wrong things but we 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 got some beers with Robert Kamp, the owner or the the founder, and uh, after a gig in Dortmund, and he really loved uh, our uh, album Thy Black Destiny, and he was so fucking pissed that it didn't sell more mm. and better. And I said, yeah, what do you expect? You know, we're not you know forest jerking troll romanticism about <laughs> vampirism and stuff yeah. where you know a fist in your face telling you to fuck off and that's another thing with with back at that time we were so fed up with all the idiots and all the bullshit in the scene so that's also another factor that we were, we didn't want to do this anymore because nah i don't want to be I don't want to be a part or, 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 or you know, yeah, I'm, I'm playing death, black metal, I'm being in the same category as those other fucking idiots that I can't stand because it's just, ah, you know, <laughs> so I'm going away as usual, but <laughs> I, 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 that's my feelings. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I am a very, very passionate person in general uh, about things, but still, um, I, I, I love to be be this way. And those who can't stand it or think I'm too much, man, 
it's your loss, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, res- I respect it. I really do. Um, what you, we were talking a little bit earlier about like, um, you know, the scene, we talked about how you were, you know, friends with the guys in dissection. What about a lot of the other bands that we had talked about, like on the show? You know, there were so many bands from yeah. that time period. There were a lot of bands that I didn't hear, actually. So I got some good uh, tips. <laughs> okay. That's another thing that I enjoyed from that show because there were a lot of, you know, I, I mean, it was quite funny at some times, you know, <laughs> because someone was always frustrated, you know, no, more, more. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, uh, and I can really understand it because I wanted to hear more w- of some bands as well. I have to check them out. I haven't done it yet, but it w- was it were an, a Finnish band that I really wanted to check out. And and of course, Dark oh, yeah. Fortress, I had to check. I'd known about them for a long time, but still, I never really listened to it. I always been told because... Uh, the guys of Lord Belial, which we always been close friends to, uh, were on tour with them for many, many years ago. And I told them that they are fantastic, but I, I never really got into it. And I know mm. that, you know, they are very close friends as well. So, I mean, um, but it, it has been, it's, it has been, it's so much all the time, you know, you mm-hmm. rarely got the time to sit down and enjoy things like that, and, you know. But I'm I'm trying to take time nowadays to just enjoy an album or, you know, sit down, read the books that I always wanted to read. And, you know, the, that's an, the thing. I, I've, I've stopped reading the news and I stopped watching TV. I don't even see movies. I For the last three years, I haven't done anything like that. I, I just, you know, listen to music all, all my spare time when I'm not the family man. I, I, I you know sit down in my sanctuary, you know, listening to music, writing poetry, lyrics, whatever, doing riffs, reading, you know, just being myself and really, mm. really enjoying it in solitude because that's when I, uh, that's when I'm truly happy when I by myself really uh, and can, yeah. you know, just go out wherever and mm-hmm. come back with whatever uh, I love it yeah um, I can relate to that that that's my main I'm, I'm happiest when I'm on my own in my own thoughts I can totally get that uh, yeah yeah I understand yeah 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 of course yeah. and it's it's it makes me glad to hear it because I think that there's another <laughs> A qu- uh, answer to the question before why it has t- taken this time to for people to realize far more. The, it, it's a lot of factors, of course. Back then, they were coming one year apart from the recording till it was released. Uh, a lot of bands came in between. There came so much good bands and records at that time, so it got lost in everything and. But another thing is this, that I, I think that people has, a lot of people anyway, has awakened spiritually in another way um, the last 10 years or so. Um, and seeing what's really important in life and listening to yourself, um, don't listen to others opinion about you because they don't really know you they, they just knew, know what you are showing them and they then they interpret uh, interpret a little uh, interpret it I, I can't pronounce the word so <laughs> I <got> interpret you. <laughs> it. Oh, whatever uh, <laughs> you understand what i mean it's their it's what they think about you because but everybody sees things in different ways and that's my personal thoughts anyway i i think that uh, things has happened I, I i i see that when i talk to younger people today they have a there's so much more to them than i i think that there were to me back then uh, they are so intelligent they are so in touch with their selves uh they have an, an in integrity, which I, I haven't seen 
back then and I was surprised to see when I got into the scene again and listening to new bands which some of them are fantastic I mean they have taken this genre to <laughs> realms where I would never even think of trying to get it and and that's the beauty of uh, this uh, music that it's ever evolving and it's no limits it's it's totally limitless and i have so much respect for that and i have so much respect for newer bands younger bands that you know yeah man old timer this is how this what you did back then this is how we do it now and i whoa yeah, I really like it. And <laughs> and when I meet some of these guys and they, they, they are so you know humble and I wow cool. But of course then again we had to reinvent ourselves with something that wasn't done before. So it was a really tough journey and um in that process you have to of course make mistakes, otherwise you won't learn. Uh no, that's a that, that, so being where I am from, where we are, we are from, and we were part of all this. Yes, yes, yes. I, I am extremely proud to be a part of that, and I and I'm glad to have been a part of that. And and, and you know, people. Oh, I wish I was there. You know. Yeah. Well, I, I, you can wish that, but still, you have all this. You know, testing around. So you know. Take from mm -hmm. what's from here now and go from that. I mean, you create magic anyway. And they are proof. I, I got so much proof from newer bands. So I'm just, you know, wow. And a lot of the, the main message has gone through. Uh, and it is, you know, be true to yourself. Don't care what anybody thinks about it. It's your fucking statement or you know print in the music scene and if you think it's good man it is good mm -hmm. just because people doesn't understand it maybe 25 years later they will understand it right right <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the beautiful thing right now i mean in, in the demand you know i mean i saw you guys announced for you know all these shows yeah. you know playing far away from the sun and fall and i couldn't even i couldn't believe it i mean i said i can't i gotta go to this but what i know you guys have done it now once or twice what, what was that like man like going back on stage and getting to relive those songs oh, man. with a whole new audience uh, it was fantastic I, I have to say it was fantastic it was very very hard <laughs> and you know Fuck, I was nervous before. Uh, we all were, I think. Um, but it's just me and Anders from the old lineup as Nicholas had to quit playing drums because of his tinnitus. Um, so we have even better drummer now, Tobbe Shelgren from, yeah, he was the one who played with Dissection, uh, mm. all the live shows. Uh, and we've been friends since we were 16 back in the days. and. Um, he, is, he has been playing with us before for some shows back in the uh, 99 and we do, did some shows in 2020 and 20, no, now 2020, now 2001 and 2000, no, the last one was 2000. I, anyway, we did some shows <laughs> with him um, then as well then. He was, you know, he was asking us when we did a, a test show for only invited people um, before the COVID thing happened because we were going to play uh, the Netherlands Death Fest for, as a first show. And um, I put together this questionnaire, uh, you know, after the show and it was only people that we had invited uh, and it was only, you know, <laughs> people. It was the toughest show I've ever done really because it was only old musicians, you know, it was, you know, yeah, I won't mention who, which it were, but, but you know, I, I thought, oh, this is, this is people who I want to hear from, what they have to say, because we want to do this justice, and we're, we're yeah. doing this, and most of everything we got back was, you know, fuck, yeah, 
It's mm. fucking great. You've never been this good. And now, of course, we haven't. This is actually the first time we're sober on stage. <laughs> mm. Big factor. And yeah. also, this is the time we had uh, the, the, the money to put, you know, do the stage, you know. You have to go set the atmosphere. And back then, it wasn't possible. But now we can do all these things. And we won't... Um, Compromise that. I would never do that. We had a hard time now getting over to to the states to play California Death Fest because I had to send all the the stage uh, stuff over beforehand mm. um, to uh, my new fr- fantastic friend uh, Sergio of Imperial. He um, he also played bass with us on that show because our bassist. Uh, got COVID just a couple of days mm. uh, prior to flying. So, I, you know, I had to solve it somehow. And I, you know, called him up, called him up and we were talking and I said, please, can you do this? And he, man, <laughs> yeah, and he was great. Uh, but that's the thing. I mean, I, I, we had arguments uh, about this beforehand. I mean, me and Anders, he said, oh, it's, it isn't worth it. They have a digital backdrop and everything. And I said, no. Okay. I won't sing on the, those shows where it is like that. I won't do it. So you go ahead. I don't care. I don't do it without this. And... Then he knows, you know, okay, it's no fucking use. He will do what he yeah. wants to do anyway. So I, I did. Uh, and it was a lot of frustration and haggle. And I, I burnt a lot of energy to do, just try make everything right to get all all the things that I wanted to. Um, but in the end, yes, it it is worth it. And... The, this is the thing that you can expect from the far away from the sun, sun shows because it's so important to me personally and uh, that I won't compromise on it and uh, I learn from every mistake every gig we're doing I I, I remember and um, hmm, yeah um, and the response and the gig was fantastic I think uh, in, at California Death Fest and the reviews we have gotten is that Nothing of this is, you know, fake or, you know, this is genuinely yeah. true. And the fact that I only sing on these shows now is also a, a big factor that I can express myself myself in the way that I really wanted to. And I show appreciation to the audience because, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> crazy maniac fans out there. And I love to meet <laughs> them all and, and chat with them and take pictures and, you know, so... Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I, I'm so happy to see that you guys are back doing it. And uh, I, me, me, me and the guys, we were hoping to get out there. I, we were just looking today, I guess. It looks like the tickets are sold out, which is great. Great for the for the show. So we're going to have to, I guess, wait for another <laughs> another chance on it. But I'm yeah, just happy I, to see I, that you guys that, are doing it. This is around the corner. I don't know. It's on the, let's see, East Coast. Yeah. Mar- Mar- yeah. yeah. That's the one we were looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you go then you have to let me know so we can get some beers or whatever, you know. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, listen, I'll, listen, man. I don't I don't yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, otherwise uh, I'm sure I'll see you sometime and um I mean, do what you can to get the some promoters or whatever to get in touch with us and we will definitely make our best to to see it come true. Um we really would like to you know, get people to be able to see the show. We won't do too much of these shows because we mm. don't want to, you know, milk it. But yeah, we will do a couple here and there. And we're as it is now, we have spread them out all over the world almost. And I think that's an important thing that we don't, you know, because uh, people should have the chance to see it and... Um, Seeing it on YouTube is, as you know, definitely not the same to be there no. and, and uh, witness the magic that's happening because it is happening for me yeah. on stage. At yeah. And I am going right into it. <laughs> man. Well, listen, man, I don't, I don't want to take too much more of your time here. I got to ask one question earlier. We were talking about uh, 
the riff that they that was taken from Sacramento and used in dissection. What riff was it? I gotta know. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta know now. Yeah, you gotta know. Uh, I will tell you if you don't send it on the air because I don't want to, you know. Ah, yeah, I got you. I got you. So don't even worry about it. It was just my brain being yeah, like, what oh, riff? Was? <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to keep it for yourself <laughs> then because. It, it it sends out the wrong message, and I I mean I have the deepest respect respect for dissection. I mean they're they all of them are very very personal friends of mine, and we're still very good friends. And I mean it was Ole Öhman who lives just a couple of blocks away from me now, and we we <laughs> we always been very good friends with him, but it it was his idea to steal the riff before. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but it, it, it's a good story now. But it's yeah. you know, and he he recalls it very very well. When I said, no, oh, I don't care, hello <laughs> 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 fucker. Uh, no, I, I I will be honest. I think that uh, they did uh, make it even better than mm, okay. I did in our song. And I'll give you a hint. They they built all the song around this riff. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> if that helps, I don't know. <laughs> it does. I don't even know what the song is called. I can, I can, I can hum it for you, but no, I don't know. Right. I, I don't recall the song. I have to check it out. Then. Yeah. Uh, but still, no. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just history, you know how it, exactly. how things were back then, and 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 you know it, that it would be such uh, have such an impact on everything. It's it's crazy, but it's fun, and yeah, I I. I of course give it to dissection and my old friend June, of course. Yeah. Well, listen, man. Yeah. It was it was great. It was, I, it was an honor to have you on the show, and I gotta say, man, I'm just I'm, I'm really I'm even more impressed. I mean, just how <laughs> true to it you are. I mean, how you really just Thanks. I mean, nothing about this is fake, and I, I really really respect it Thanks. and respect the uh, you know how you handle this band, man. <sighs> Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I, I, I am humble, and uh, that's why I felt that when I heard uh, your show, uh, I, I felt that wow, I have to contact these guys. I mean, this is you know, I got goosebumps. When, you know, when when you were, I don't know, ah, man, I, I do understand your feelings to it because I understand that feeling myself. And that's what it's all about. I mean, if if I can get those feelings out for other people, man, I'm just happy. And, oh, it's an honor. It's an honor. Yeah. And without people like yourself getting it, I would just be jerking around for myself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so we're all into this together. And... Yeah. I'm an old, I'm a fan, I'm an underground f fan myself, and, you know, Sacramento will always be an underground band, no matter what happens, and, uh, I mean, but thank you, thank you very much for, for saying this, it, it, that means a, a lot to me, and um, that's why I'm so careful with interviews, because those who, who I let interview me, I have hand-picked, and I have had... I had a feeling about all of them that mm -hmm. yes, this is good to do, and uh, I will continue to do so. And I will refuse anything that's not giving me the right vibe or energy. You know, it's yeah. it's not worth it. It, it, it lives. It, everything has a life of its own, and the entity of Sacramentum will, you know, <laughs> will punish mm -hmm. me hard if I do something stupid. You know. No, nope, that's exactly what I, that's exactly what I mean. I respect that. You know, you, you it's you're going, you're taking your own path with all this okay. stuff, and that's a special thing okay. to find. And I, I think it's amazing. That's a promise, and um, you know, it's too important to myself. I mean, of course, I've lied to myself in my life, but I'm done doing things like this. And I, I, I know who I am. I'm confident here who I am, and I know what I want to do and what I don't want to do. So, I mean. I will do it. Pro no, I won't do it of public of or of doing albums with it. I can do it by myself uh, with friends, you know, and it can stay like that. I, I don't have any the need to <laughs> other people to coming and 
thinking, oh, wow, this is great. Ah, this is just a you know joke thing. We, we just put it together. It's fun, but, you know, no. Nah. Like it is with most of the bands out there, mm-hmm. I might add. <laughs> but I think you, you <laughs> have the same feelings about it. So yeah. I, I, but I, I totally, you know, it's it's great to to uh, talk to new people that um, have the the same, was that core values or whatever. I mean, I love mm-hmm. it. I love it, and I would love to meet you someday uh, to to get us a, a couple of beers. And I hope so. You know, yeah. We will. So, I, yeah, well. I'm sure of that. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whatever. Whatever. Then I understand. We can never, 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 ever replicate something like "Far Away from the Sun," because this is your first feeling with it. So it won't happen. But we can take it from there and evolve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we will we'll yeah. try to copy it. Of course not. It would just be stupid. But. And then we were cheating ourselves again. Oh, this is popular. Let's do it again. Mm. Ah, fucking assholes, idiots. No. <laughs> Take it from there and evolve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's. And please, that's... please, bands, if you're listening to this, do, do just what I tell this. I mean, fame, popularity doesn't mean anything if you're not true to yourself. That's it. That's it, man. Cheers, my friend. <laughs> Cheers to you. Have a good, uh, you know, have a great rest of your night, man, and uh, weekend, and uh, good luck with the with the rest of this album. I know it's going to be amazing, so I can't wait for it. Yeah, I don't know when it's going to be recorded yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. When it comes. The entity will decide that. But um, it was a pleasure talking to you, um, and thank you. Same to you. For, for, for your time, because it's your time. I know you're a busy, you're a family man now as well. So, and that's yep, not fucking yep. easy. I know. I know. No, it's not. <laughs> so, <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Completely understand. Yeah. And full respect to that. So, um, yeah. Great, man. All right. Well, it was, it was great. And uh, yeah, enjoy your night, man. I appreciate it. The same to you. <laughs> <laughs>